Two brand new videos again from Grip Media. They have been talking a lot about budget 2025. So drop a comment down below if you guys have any thoughts. If you always want me to react to something else, let me know. Today, the video is by, <clears throat> I'm going to guess, Ben Scallon asking questions. But we have Green Party Minister Catherine Martin says she and her party would ultimately like to see a universal basic income implemented in Ireland. A policy of providing regular unconditional payments to all citizens regardless of employment status or income level so it's basically they want everybody on the dole this is an orwellian 1984 type of thing guys you do not want this uh, it's a communistic type of thing guys i used to think that a universal basic income was good okay uh but now i do not guys it is complete uh, travesty if you guys want a universal basic income trust me it's not going to be good because once the government start paying you thirty thousand a year ten thousand a year twelve thousand a year whatever the case may be then you are going to be at the whim of the government. You're going to be withheld to the state, basically. And, you know, it is what it is, guys. And hell, free money. Hey, that sounds good. But at the same time, guys, you want to make your own money. Just build a business to make money, guys. But nowadays, you know, people's jobs are so irrelevant. You know, most people have jobs that you go to work and you're doing nothing. You're just ticking off things. You're HR. <laughs> you're just bullshit. These bullshit jobs that don't matter to the world. And you can be fired tomorrow and a robot could take your position. So that's why they want this universal basic income. So drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and let's get it. Minister, on the uh, basic income pilot for the arts, uh, I'm wondering, obviously that's been extended. If that proves to be satisfactory at the end of the pilot, is it the kind of thing that you would uh, desire or consider expanding to other more precarious fields, not just the arts, but say, just for an example, carers or something along those lines? Is that the kind of thing that you would... So they're using it for the arts, guys. And I'm an artist, okay? I make videos on YouTube full time. Okay, I'm a personal trainer. I do my own business. But specifically, it's for like people that play like the Tin Whistle, the Baron, you know, the Irish instruments. It's not going to be for a guy like me that's critiquing the government. I guarantee that, guys. They wouldn't give me... Bro... Matter of fact, if they give me that, I would, I, bro, I'd love to see, that hell would freeze over. I swear, I'd love to see the day that the government pay me money to talk on the internet. That just doesn't sound like a real thing, bro. That's crazy. Hope to uh, expand it too if the, uh, if the pilot is successful. Um, well, what I would say on the, the basic income for the arts, that the, it was important to me that the, the re there was really strong research that underpin it, Ben, and what we're seeing now is we're seeing the benefits from creative output point of view, but what's really interesting as well is the, the mental and, and, and well-being point of view of, of the creators from having, from having that security. So, I don't think you should have security as an, in as an income creator. I saved up €10,000 and I've been working the last three years non-stop to build this YouTube channel, to become high status in the society so I can talk about things in government, so I can talk about music, stuff like that, guys. I don't think you should have a backup plan. Ain't no plan B, only plan A. This is ridiculous, guys. This is why artists become super famous, is because they put everything into it, guys. I've forgotten about everything else. All I wanna do is this. This is all I wanna do for the rest of my life, guys. You understand? There ain't no plan B, there's no plan B, only plan A. I hate plan B's, no plan B's, this is plan A. And when you don't have your back against the wall like that, your creative artwork isn't as good. It isn't as good as when you're just given money. Most artists just sit around and do nothing then. If you real, if you want real artists, I would say <laughs> you're not allowed any pay over a certain amount of money, guys. That's how you keep artists flipping, making the best content. Keep them poor, you know what I'm saying? And eventually one day you become rich, but keep you poor as long as possible, guys. That's how you make the best art, trust me. Um, and what I've done in ring fence and that money is to, to give the flexibility to, to the next government to really consider extending and expanding. I've made no secret on a personal level. I believe it should be um, expanded to, to, to more artists. Um, but yes, I, like if we, for me as a, as a Green Party, um, I suppose TD speaking outside uh, of being Minister, um, the, the UBI is core. The universal basic income is, is, is core to, to the Greens and it's um, something that, would, that we, we would seek at very first meeting of the Green Party so to have that so yes if you know we can always consider extending it to to others and I think in in that way Ben the the basic income for the artist serves as as a good template and the, the fact that the research is there if it was ever to extend to another part of society but that'll be for another government and a decision would require it there that is ridiculous guys so they're going to try and implement that for sure I thought that was going to be a long time before we try to implement that it's definitely going to be a lot shorter, guys. It might even be next year or two years' time they're trying to implement that. So 
Next, we have <clears throat> Tobin accuses government of trying to buy an election budget 2025. In the 20 years I've been in politics, I've never seen such a blatant attempt by government to buy an election. So they're basically trying so to buy an election. So reaction to the budget to that was announced leader. yesterday? Yeah, in the 20 uh, years that I've been involved in Peter, politics, I have uh, never Tobin. seen such so, yeah, a blatant effort by a government to, to buy an election thoughts, such as this. So like even the, the once offs. The budget that was announced yesterday? Yeah, in the 20 years that I've been involved in politics, I have never seen such a blatant effort by a government to buy an election such as this. Like even the, the once offs. Because they're so hated by the people. Okay, there's such flaws in their government processes. They're, they're talking about it's like ideas, they're just going to put them out just before an election and just after the election as well. Ideas. It's like there's the government are looking to hypnotize the people of Ireland the with a few shiny people, coins just before the election so that they'll forget that they've been in government for the last 13 years well. doing the damage like the that they've been done. They're looking to hypnotize the people of Ireland with a few shiny coins just before the election so that they'll forget that they've been in government for the last 13 years doing the damage that they've been done. Exactly. Do not forget the damage. You know, Irish people have a short term memory, guys. We only remember about four to five years. We don't remember anything after that. So make sure you remember all the damage caused by Fine Gael, Fine Gael Fine Fáil specifically, uh, Fine Gael, Sinn Féin, you know, the Green Party. They're all horrendous parties, guys. Hey, don't vote for any of these gangs in government, guys. Vote for independence. Vote for more, you know, uh, patriotic independence that want to actually see Ireland do better, guys. Not just our flipping, you know what I mean, our predecessors like crazy. So make sure that you're voting for people with your brain, not just your money and your emotions, okay? Make sure you actually have a, a based view of reality when it comes to voting for the next people that come to election. Make sure it's not a emotional decision, okay? And one this of the big problems I have is that the government is throwing money, money now at a range okay? of different issues, but they're not fixing the issues, okay? and that's do the real issue. So if you look at the amount of waste that's happening, for sure the money, the government is going to increase the level of money going into infrastructure, but there's nothing in this budget that actually shows them fixing that waste. And there's, there's no accountability systems being put in place, there's no responsibility being put into place. We're actually going to get less for more money in future, and that's not going to benefit people in the long run. In terms of the health service again 25 billion euros into the health service but no talk of real reform so in other words we're going to see more middle management more administration going in there and yet the doctors and nurses in the front line are still going to be walking over to Australia and Canada to work there so you know there's no that we're still going to have the 90 the 900,000 people in hospital waiting lists the overcrowded A&Es in terms of Gardaí for example again more money but right now Australia is actually employing more Gardaí than the Irish government is. The overcrowded a &Es. In terms of Gardaí, for example, again, more money, but right now, Australia is actually employing more Gardaí than the Irish government is. Jesus. Yeah, but I would tell you guys something. I might react to the video. Do not join the Australian police from Ireland. You may get given a gun, but the last day there was three or three police officers, I think it was in southwest, somewhere in southwest Australia. They were murdered, okay? They were killed. So this is a very real possibility you can get shot and killed in Australia while in the line of duty. So I definitely wouldn't employ... Incredibly, because they're providing better pay terms and conditions. Even issues such as childcare. Uh, yes, the government have I mean, invested Australia more money to bring the cost you know, down, but childcare units are closing now on a weekly basis. So what's the point of having cheaper childcare if... There's, le there's no providers to actually give access to families for. For sure, we want to see investment put into making it more affordable, but we need to make sure that our childcare providers are able to function, that it's feasible to be in business. Now, what some ministers argued yesterday when the efficiency question was brought up to them was that we only focus on the negative cases and we don't look at projects that were very large and that actually were on time and on budget, such as the uh, national broadband plan. This was one that they pointed to and they said that lessons have been learned and are being learned from those instances and that those lessons are now being applied to the Dublin Metro project, for example. So it is uh, materially different and will be different going forward that they've kind of found a formula that works with some of these projects. What would be your response to that? I think it's absolute nonsense, to be honest. You know, like when you look at 2.5 billion euros in terms of the National Children's Hospital, now one of the reasons... What would be your response to that? I think it's absolute nonsense, to be honest. You know, like when you look at 2.5 
billion euros in terms of the National Children's Hospital. Now, one of the reasons yeah. the National Children's Hospital, for those who don't know, is more expensive than the why British elite. That is balloons, oh, no. and why there's still the a checkbook available to BAM in relation to this is because the uh, is the initial more. contract was so loose in terms of <laughs> what it was actually planned. Why? Now, I've got my hands and on the National Maternity Bama Hospital contract, and that has exactly the same bill of quantities, which has exactly the same looseness there, which is going to provide a checkbook for any future contractor in that space as well. The day after the the OPW came into the committee to, you know, give a mea culpa in relation to the the bicycle shed, the Gucci bicycle shed there, they actually put out. The OPW came into the committee to, you know, give a mea culpa in relation to the. The bicycle shed, the Gucci bicycle shed there. They actually put out <laughs> the Gucci bicycle shed. I like that. <laughs> I like that one, bro. That's good ass. Like that bike shed, guys. That's gonna be just car, oh, bro. I might have to take a picture with that bike shed. That's like three hundred and fifty thousand euro worth of, of of materials, which is just outrageous. Concrete. A, is cheap. a tender Steel for 600,000 like, euro and PR contract to, to mitigate against the negative publicity like, that they, they just created. There's nothing learned in, in relation to this. Actually, if the government had have taxed it the term that lessons will be learned, we'll be all very much richer uh, in this country uh, at the moment. What's at the heart of this is that there's no personal responsibility, there's no personal accountability in relation to this. What we want to name to is that at senior levels of the civil service, that is actually written into the contracts, that is written into the job specs, that they have a responsibility to mind the public purse and to seek value for the country. Because if that happens in the private sector, if a person wasted a colossal amount of money in the private sector in that manner, they'd be gone, they'd have job, lost their job. And that's the key catalyst that makes people want to protect the money. In terms of the health service, an uh, into parliamentary question that we put in shows that the government's actually paid 2.5 billion euros in compensation in the health service in the last five years. Why? Because there's a massive amount of adverse incidents that are happening within the health service currently. People are getting injured every day. 500 people died last year as a result of an accident that happened in the health service. Why is it happening? There are too few doctors and nurses. Why are there too few doctors? Well, right now, believe it or not, in the university system in Ireland, in the medical uh, uh, sections of the, those universities, the majority of places are actually for students who are born outside of the EU. Why is that? Because those universities get more money from them than the government is giving them to educate students. They are actually for students who are born outside of the EU. Why is that? Because those universities get more money from them than the government is giving them to educate students. So they're getting people in from, from like India and stuff like that to become doctors, which is fine guys, they're just as good as Irish doctors. But here's the thing, for the most part, okay, of course there's some outliers I'm sure. But here's the thing, I was telling my uh, friend the last time, you know, doctors in this country, guys, if you work for the HSC, you get paid nothing. Like, we all think, oh, we're going to be on, like, ER, like, in those American TV shows and stuff, where they make millions and they have the huge house because they're running their own business. If you work for the state, guys, you don't get paid nearly as much as if you're running your own business. So they have to like, depend no, like, on uh, so, students from yeah, outside of the doctor, EU to fund the universities. And as a result, the majority of those doctors, when they graduate, leave. So the solution there is proper workplace planning to get more Irish doctors into the universities so that on the outside, when, when, when they've graduated, they can work here and become GPs here. But again, the government is missing all of that. This government is clueless in relation to reform, in relation to fixing the situation. Situation. And all they're about now at the moment, at the moment is spreading hard-earned uh, uh, taxpayers' money as thick as they can, left, right and centre, to buy this election. And all they're about now at the moment, at the moment is spreading hard-earned uh, uh, taxpayers' money as thick as they can, left, right and centre, to buy this election. Yeah, literally. That's a, good, that's a really good... I like this. I, I know this guy is kind of a bit of a... You know, he said some negative stuff in the past, but I like that. I like that analysis, guys. They're just trying to buy the election after basically ruining the government for so many years. We need a more long-term memory. The, the people of Ireland don't have a very long-term thinking. We, we, only, we only remember about four to five years, you know, the same as like the US presidential election, guys. We only remember about four to five years. Anything past that, we're like, oh, well, everything was fine back, then. you know what I mean? So we need to start uh, Now, the government in their defense the were arguing that the opposition okay. 
want to have it both ways from all directions that they're simultaneously saying oh you're not investing enough in this and you're not investing enough in that and you're, you're doing whatever and also you're spending too much and you're trying to buy the election and that they're sort of damned if they do and damned if they don't and if they'd gone for a really conservative budget they would have been accused of not addressing people's needs and if they went for the kind of budget they did go for they would be accused of uh, trying to do some sort of pre-election ploy what will be your response to that defense of the, them, themselves well, first of all, we want to see reform in the public sector. So we actually believe that you could actually get far more for the citizen in relation to the public sector if you have reform for the money that's being put into there. So, for example, we often hear of recruitment moratoriums in the health service, which stuff for doctors and nurses being employed. Imagine if we had a recruitment moratorium for senior management and senior administration within the health service, which would reduce the ratio of administrators and managers to actually... Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but just on the specific point, as I say, do you think that there's a an element of truth to that defense from the government that the opposition kind of want to have their cake and eat it too in general across the board. No, all I can do is speak for AIM2 and we're very very clear we actually want to see far more bang for the buck of, of, uh, of the citizen in terms of investment and the way you do that is to reform the delivery of the public service, reform the delivery of um, the, the infrastructure sector to make sure that we actually probably are putting in the same amount but we're getting far more for it and, and also in terms of the, the, the once-off payments I would say while they're very attractive politically speaking you know and um, they they're, they're actually not really focused on helping people, those who really are, are in need uh, at the moment. They will disappear like snow off a ditch after this election. And I'll give you one example. You have the example of the electricity credit. The electricity credit will be wiped out completely by the PSO levy increase and by the carbon tax uh, increase. So the government is giving with one hand and they're taking from the other hand. We the electricity credit will be wiped out completely by the PSO levy increase and by the carbon tax uh, increase. So the government is giving with one hand and they're taking from the other hand. That's crazy, guys. I knew these, these, these like handouts are always bad, guys. Nothing in life is ever free. He would like to see when you get definitely supports for those who need it, but that they're targeted and they help those, those who need it, rather than this one for everybody in the audience situation, which is purely uh, organized on the basis of trying to win an election. But that they're targeted and they help those, those who need it, rather than this one for everybody in the audience situation, which is purely uh, organized on the basis of trying to win an election. Ha! Huh. Absolutely ridiculous, guys. Like, comment, share, gripped media stuff, guys. Go over to their channel, donate to their stuff. Go subscribe to their channel, guys, because of course, gripped media are fire. They are pretty much the biggest, the biggest channel, you know, the biggest news platform in the whole country, apart from my news platform, of course. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that one, guys. Make sure to subscribe. We're about to hit 100,000 subscribers this week, and yeah, loads more political videos coming. Just stay tuned. Drop a comment. Tell me what other videos you want me to react to, if it's political, whatever the case may be. I love you all. Stay free, and I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Peace.